After I came to America in 1989, at a mature age of 13, I started my work career. I worked at $2 an hour walking through Castor and Kaufman area of Northeast Philadelphia, putting pizza menus inside door handles so that when a person comes back home, they couldn't possibly open their door without finding the flyer. I bet you were thinking, who would ever do that thing? Well, it was me. <laughs> um, as I did that, I was tired and bored, and that's how I spent my weekend, and I secretly dreamed about winning a lottery. But then someone told me that you have to be 18 to play lottery, and I thought, hmm, that means I have to work for another five years. <laughs> And so I looked at the menu and I saw all the good food that I was advertising and I thought perhaps for the next five years I would work inside the pizza store so I could eat for free. And so I walked inside the pizza store and decided to apprentice myself as a cook. It was quickly discovered that somehow I was born on the same day as the owner of the pizza store and perhaps that's why he thought I knew how to cook. <laughs> Well, that I didn't know how to do, but I did know how to eat. So I was making burgers and selling them, but I was eating much faster than I was cooking them. I imagined that late at night he was laying in bed calculating on the food that I ate for that day, and, um, and I was calculating how many more hours I had to work in the pizza store before I win the lottery. And then one day he made special order fries for his mother-in-law, and I didn't know it and I ate it. <laughs> so I had to go and look for another job. But I was <laughs> smart and I knew that I had to find a job where there was food. And so I um, started my career at a bakery and I was given a task of filling a strudel it was a very expensive filling, who knew, of chocolate and expensive nuts and they waited before I arrived and within an hour there was a lot of dough and not a lot of stuff to fill it with. <laughs> And so the owner, who had cameras, told me that he would be moving me to a packaging department where I would just be putting labels on already pre-sealed stuff. <laughs> and I did that, and then I saw in the corner of my eye that there was an older Russian lady cooking blintzes or crepes, and I made friends with her, and I ate a lot of crepes that day, and then the owner called me, and then the week, and told me that he's moving me yet again, this time to a store downtown on Sansom, um, Sansom Street, a couple of uh, minutes away from here, where I'd be selling food that's really prepackaged and sealed and labeled. <laughs> and so I stood there in a pretty empty bakery waiting for customers to watch them open the package and eat, because I couldn't afford to buy it. I was making like $4 an hour. I still had four years to go until I win that lottery. And I dreamed, and then across the street there was a mom and pop store that I used to go and buy Lay's potato chips, like extra greasy on a special sale, buy two, get third one free for a dollar. And so that day I was going for my healthy lunch, and there was a new guy at the cash register, and he was a fellow immigrant, and I su suspect he did not know about the legal age of selling lottery tickets. <laughs> because when I, at the corner of my eye, saw the lottery tickets hanging behind him, he said to me, lottery ticket? You what? And I said, yes, very much so. And he says, one dollar. So I put the three chips, three bags of chips, down at the counter. I handed him the dollar, and he gave me a ticket. He also gave me a penny. Who knew that we need to scratch it with? So he pointed three fingers, explaining to me that it takes three identical symbols to win the lottery. So I started scratching away. You know, a little house, a rainbow, number four, odd combination of things, <laughs> a ladder, a circle, another rainbow, a few more completely useless symbols, and then another rainbow. I started to shake from excitement. I still didn't know how much money I could have possibly won with this, but I saw that the guy was also as excited as I was. So he also grabbed the penny and he started helping me scratch to see how much I won. You wouldn't believe it. A number of five zero appeared at the corner of the ticket. 
I don't remember much what happened after that. But due to the fact that there were no family and friends close by, my excitement had to be shared with the poor salesman. <laughs> I ran behind the counter in a screaming, ecstatic moment, screaming at the top of my lungs, jumped on top of him, attached myself to his waist with my strong legs. Remember, I've been eating quite a lot, and I was strong by this time. And I was screaming in such a trance that I only saw his sweat just pouring down his left side, because that's the side that was um, closer to me. I still think he's deaf to his left ear. That's, it's been 30 years. Somebody came in probably a few seconds later, maybe minutes, who knows, maybe hours, but I just don't know what, what happened to time. And then eventually I climbed down the poor guy, and with $50 in hand, I walked out of the store. This was definitely the happiest day of my life. Yes, I had children, I got married, but that was it. That was the happiest day of my life. I imagine somewhere on this planet, there is an old gentleman who is obsessed about legal age now. He probably Googles legal age for everything. He's probably deaf on his left ear, and he's allergic to penicillin, screaming teenage girls, and lottery tickets. <laughs> and when I walk inside stores and I see there is a huge jackpot up for grabs, I make a conscious decision not to buy the ticket, because I, as a responsible citizen, I worry what would happen to the guy who sells it to me. <laughs>